Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. And welcome to our Topical Tuesday videos, where we like to start conversations with you guys, the whiskey community. Today, we're talking about bottles we've fallen out of love with, and we got to give a shout out to Horses and Bourbon for this idea. Yeah. We thought it was a great video idea. Horses and Bourbon is always up in the chats, in the comments, all over whiskey tube. Awesome person, cannot thank him enough for this idea. Yeah. We thought it was wonderful. So we're gonna get right into it. We're talking about whiskeys we've fallen out of love with. So we once did love these whiskeys. Yes. And first up, Buffalo Trace. The Mighty Buffalo. The Mighty Buffalo. I remember watching a Whiskey Tribe video a long time ago where they really heralded this pour. Yeah. Talked about putting it in their decanters, talked about how awesome it was. And once upon a time, we really, really liked this too. And I would I would go out looking for it fairly regularly. And then it got harder to find mm. and people started losing their minds over Buffalo Trace products and started doing more blind tastings and found out that we just don't love this product as much as we did. When we're tasting it blind, yeah. and we don't know that we're tasting it, it doesn't hold up. Yeah, it's good. Don't hear what we're not saying. We're not saying it's bad. Right. We're just saying- Because we did really a, like it. Right, once upon a time, we loved this. This was like one of our go-to 90 proof pours. And we just gravitated away from that because quite frankly, it is good, but Aaron prefers rye and a little bit more of an earthy profile. Mm -hmm. This is a little too sweet for you. Too sweet, yeah. And for me, it's honestly a little too candy sweet for me. Mm -hmm. I tend to prefer a little bit darker and richer profile rather than more of the sweet candy profile that yeah. this has. I see why it's a crowd favorite. It is very approachable for a beginner bourbon drinker, but we've kind of moved past that and we feel like our love with Buffalo Trace has kind of gone with that as well. So let's get this one out of the way, get into our next bottle, and let's go ahead and just stay in the Buffalo Trace family and maybe make some people mad. Weller Antique 107. Mm. This pour was more love for me than you. Yeah, I've never really loved Weller products. Yeah. And people can come at me in the comments for that, but it, it is what it is. Yeah, you get kind of this sour, like people talk about the, the weeded funk, the, yeah. the frunk of weeded bourbons and it strikes you as this kind of sour yeah. grossness. And I don't know why, I, I, it just does. Yeah, to me it comes across really good, but there is this kind of weird musty floral funk on the back end, on the finish that I just don't like. But the first time I ever had this was when family was over, mm. we got a bottle, I was smoking some ribs on the, on the smoker, yeah. and it did go really well with those to its credit but it was our first time all trying this. We loved it, we went head over heels for it. It became progressively harder to find. And it got to the point to where it was kind of my special pour. And mm -hmm. I thought about even going on the secondary market and picking these up for like $95 a piece. I was thinking about spending my entire monthly fun money budget on acquiring Weller 107s. Wow, I did not know that. This was before the channel ever started kind of pre-genesis of stuff and whiskey. And I said to myself, you know, this is crazy. Like, why am I thinking about spending all my money to go get a bunch of bottles like this? Yeah. Let me put it in some blind tastings against other things. Started doing that. Guess what? Found out when it's totally blind. I don't like this nearly as much as I thought I did. Wow, well, yeah. So something to be said for blind tastings. That's why we do things the way we do over here. But subsequently to the topic of this video, I fell out of love with Weller 107. Yeah. So honestly, I'll still pick a store pickup if I see it, but I'm not looking at these for $65, yeah. which is what they go for in our market anymore. I'm not interested in buying them for that. Next up, let's go ahead and put a, a stake in the heart of another fan favorite. Okay. And it's going to be Old Forester, mm. 1920. You gonna ruffle some feathers, boy. <laughs> we love Old Forester. We do. You love Old Forester. I love the distillery so much. You would live there if you I could. I would live there if I could live in a distillery. It is the coolest place. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a good, product. Don't hear what we're not saying. Again, it's yeah. a good product. And particularly a few years ago when we would buy these back when they had the old labeling, I don't know if they were doing something different with the batches or what, but we really liked it back then. I remember putting it in blind tastings and it doing very well, mm. but just over time, I don't know if our palates have changed. I don't know if the blends have changed. I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of flavor drift between blend to yeah. blend, batch to batch over time. But this product has turned into a little bit of acetone nail polish remover Yeah, and undertones. it's not just this bottle. We've had several bottles and each yeah. one of 1920 kind of has that that acetone yeah. undertone. And frankly, there are other 
Old Forester products in that family that we like a little bit more than 1920. Absolutely. We like 1910 way better than 1920. Mm -hmm. You like 1870, I think it is, the or 90 proof. Or 1897. Well, we both like 1897 yeah. as well, but you like you actually like the 90 proof 1870. I do, yeah. Because it's kind of had this tempered sweetness mm -hmm. that's more in your wheelhouse. Yeah. But this is a good product. I mean, I've been trying to work through this bottle, as you can tell, but I don't think when this bottle is gone, I don't suspect that we'll buy another one. We bought one of this new labeling. It had the acetone undernote. And then we, I thought, you know what? That's gotta be a bad batch. I bought another one after that bottle was gone months later. It also had it. Yeah. And then the uh, only reason we bought a third bottle of it is because we wanted it for some channel stuff because it's such a crowd favorite. We wanted to see, and also I was like, am I crazy? Like, are we, <laughs> what's going on yeah. with this? Yeah. So this one right here, as much as I wish I could say that we loved it because it's available, it's good proof, the stats on paper, it looks like it's we gonna be keep a great pour. We're keeping it real. We gotta keep it real. Yeah. And with that said, let's go ahead and round this out with yet another darling killed. And this is going to be Bardstown Bourbon Company's Discovery Series. Mm. And this one hurts me the most of all <laughs> because I love Bardstown Bourbon Company. And we love them as a company, they're yeah. awesome. And we love their products, quite yeah. frankly, or have in the past at least. All the way up until like Bardstown Discovery Series 2, 3, and 4, amazing. This is three. I'm clinging to the last that I have left. This was my favorite batch of all of them. Bardstown Discovery Series 5 was all right. We liked it more than most people, I think. Yeah. Six was good. We have a bottle of six. But then seven, they started introducing the corn whiskey. It got way too sweet for you. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just it wasn't quite to my flavor profile. And then in Bardstown Discovery Series number eight, they're starting to do stave finishing. And nine, they're, they're doing a little bit of uh, Georgia bourbon in there, which could be great for all we know, but the $140 price tag is becoming harder and harder to swallow for for, a, for not who knowing. Knows what. Right. Yeah. Two, three, and four, we're like, oh, $140 for this? Yeah, that's a great special bottle buy. But man, it's really getting hard for me to rationalize spending that kind of money on an unknown now. Yeah. It's just getting a little too experimental. And honestly, we feel like uh, Barrel Bourbon Company, Barrel Craft Spirits, they are doing in their barrel bourbon batches, they're doing almost the same thing that Bardstown is doing for about 50 or 60 bucks less a bottle. Mm. And it's hard for us to spend the money on this when we could get a mm, barrel batch. That's true. Just saying, I hope we get to try Bardstown Discovery Series 9. I hope it changes our mind and gets the series back on track. But I'm not holding my breath. I'm kind of... I've been I've been burned a little bit. Aww. I've been hurt. I'm a I'm a lover scorn. You're gonna write about it in your tear journal. <laughs> yes, I yeah, am. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, but that's gonna be it for part one of this series. We're coming back with a part two next week because we started putting the bottles together that we've fallen out of love with and realized that it's there's, a fair few. There's a few more. <laughs> yeah, and we're trying to tighten up our content here and make it a little bit more bite-sized for you guys. So we're gonna end it there. We'll be back with four more bottles next week. But before we get out of here. We got a little other stuff to sprinkle in on our way out the door. And this one you found. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Tell the people about it. Well, there's a little musical nugget down in the description below that is a, this is one of our first videos in the studio. So it's mm -hmm. a studio um, music video yeah. of a band that I really like. And it's amazing music. And I shared it with Josh mm -hmm. and Josh loved it. And that's all I want to say. Yeah. We will it's let surprise. you know real quick. Earmuff warning. So if you have kids nearby. Oh, we, if you we, listen to the song, there yeah, is. Um, we, keep, we keep it clean over here, but it it may not be quite as clean yeah. language wise. It's not egregious. It's not, by any it's means. not explicit, but there is a word in it that you may not want yeah. your children to hear. Right. That being said, the song is totally my vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's totally Aaron's vibe. It's a <laughs> great song. You'll know when you hear it. And the talent on display is what really gets me. Mm -hmm. It's it's unreal. Like, you, you'll know. You'll know. Yeah. Like, uh, not a minute in, you're going to be like, okay, wow. This is impressive. Yeah. So we're going to leave you guys with that this week. That's your little bit of homework. Go down there, click that link, get your ears blown off. And if you like today's video, like it. If you haven't subscribed, do that. And if you want to hit the notification bell, you could be notified when we um, are about to have our monthly live streams. Be good to each other. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.